nothing that shimmers in soft candlelight. Lori Morgan once said, Drama is something that lets you know you're still alive. Well, if that's true, then Lori must be immortal. She's become a country music legend for two things. One, her classic songs like Something in Red and Five Minutes, soaring tunes that suggest Tammy Wynette and Loretta Lynn. And two, well, for having the messiest love life this side of reality TV. But now, Lori is speaking out about her twisted past and her uncertain future. Lori has a problem with country music, and one star in particular. What's happening? What does Lori Morgan consider to be her biggest mistake? And why does she have beef with this country music icon? How did she go from a superstar to dead broke? We're gonna find out the dark secret Lori learned about George Jones and how he made her quit music. We'll find out the dark truth behind her heartbreaking marriage to Keith Whitley. And most importantly, we'll find out where Lori is today. Before we dive in, just a teensy little favor, hit that thumbs up icon to show your support, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any country content. Now you're ready. Well, come on and let's go find out. What, what happened? happened? George Jones. You might think that Lori has been a country music darling forever, but there was a time in between her teenage performances at the Opry and her blockbuster debut album that Lori Morgan was a nobody. So how did George Jones scare her and also make her quit music? Let's take a look. Lori met Ron Gaddis in the 1980s. Ron played bass and sang in George Jones' band. In fact, Ron was a huge part of George's big comeback. Not many people could harmonize with the eccentric king of country. Lori and Ron had one daughter together, but the marriage only lasted about a year. But Ron suggested that Lori, whose career wasn't really taking off, audition for the band herself. It was a huge opportunity for the young Lori, who quickly got the job. But performing with George was less of a dream and more of a nightmare. George was frequently drunk, erratic, and didn't find the whole business of showing up to gigs all that important. To make matters worse, his audiences did care if he showed up or not, and they would frequently go wild if he didn't. Lori said, quote, It was scarier than hell. Oh man, they threw bottles, tomatoes, apples, anything they could find when we had to announce that George wasn't going to be there. One night, they almost tipped the bus over. The entire experience was so bad that Lori almost quit playing music for good. It would be several years until she would make a comeback. But when she did, of course, she did so with a vengeance. But just as things got better in Lori's career, her personal life took a turn for the worse. Keith Whitley now Keith Whitley was the next big thing in country music. His 1988 album, Don't Close Your Eyes, was chock full of instant classics like When You Say Nothing At All. The smile on your face lets me know that you need me. The album was so big that when Keith asked his label RCA to give his wife a record deal, they instantly agreed. Heck, they may have even given one to his grandmother. But things were a bit more difficult at home. Keith had a very serious alcohol issue. So bad, in fact, that Lori says she had to tie their legs together at night. If he had to go to the bathroom, she had to go with him so he wouldn't drink the mouthwash. Before the album came out, Lori put out the singles Out of Your Shoes and Five Minutes. Both songs took off. Right before the album was released, Lori hopped on a plane to Alaska to do a promo. Keith accompanied her to the airport and gave her a handwritten letter. It said, May you rise each day with sunlight in your heart, success in your path, answers to your prayers, and that smile that I always love to see in your eyes. I love you, Keith. When someone has a severe drug or alcohol problem, you blame yourself. It wasn't me needed to do something. It was Keith. Lori Morgan would never see Keith Whitley ever again. 
He would be found dead of alcohol poisoning at the age of 33, a week before Lori's album released. Now, Lori was a working single mother. And what's worse, the truth of Keith's final days would soon be coming out. And contrary to his very touching words to Lori, he had spent his final hours binge drinking, doing drugs, and picking up strangers at bars. Any of these painful truths would be enough to destroy a person, and Lori had to suffer all of that alone. But she survived the only way she knew how, by burying herself in her music, touring relentlessly. Here you can see her perform one of Keith's songs in tribute to her late husband. Other Entanglements In the decades after losing Keith, Lori struggled to maintain consistent, healthy relationships. So, who were the shocking men that Lori Morgan has been involved with? You won't believe who ends up on this list. She married Brad Thompson, whose claim to fame was that he was the driver of Clint Black's tour bus. Maybe Lori thought that somebody behind the scenes might have a more mellow approach to life. But things didn't work out, and Brad got 65 k and a pickup truck out of the divorce settlement. Then she dated NFL legend cowboy Troy Aikman, but that relationship was intercepted. Later, she would become involved with a politician named Fred Thompson. Fred was very notable for being involved in the hearings after Watergate. Fred even ran for president. But Lori discovered that she couldn't marry a politician, having to watch every little thing she said. She was even rumored to have been seen with Bill Clinton, though she denied it. Bill, for his part, never made a statement. So, hmm, who knows? Later on, she would marry country singer Sammy Kershaw. They were married for six years, but things ended so disastrous that they both had to get court orders to stay away from each other. And the next year, 2008, Lori had to file for bankruptcy, claiming that she'd been manipulated by her accountants. Honestly, it kinda seemed that the sun was setting on Lori Morgan. I mean, would the public ever hear her again? New Beginnings so Lori hasn't quit music, she continues to record and perform, but her strong opinions about where country is at the moment, well, those have caused some controversy in the community, and her newest attempt at love has raised some eyebrows. Is Lori Morgan pulling herself together, or is she sliding downhill? Okay, so one thing is clear, Lori is not happy with the current state of country music. She said, quote, I am not a fan of country today. Today's country can't be differentiated between pop, and you can't tell them apart. So she's doing her part to keep the tradition alive. She's recently put out two albums of more traditional country fare. Some great music with fellow artist Pam Tillis, both of which received critical acclaim. And of course, she's one of the Grand Ole Opry's biggest performers. And Lori is also trying her hand at love again. In 2010, Lori married a businessman named Randy White. Her sixth marriage, and hopefully her last. The sixth time's the charm, they say. But there's one person Lori isn't getting along with, and you might be shocked to hear why. Beef with Blake. The Grand Ole Opry is as big of a part of country music as whiskey or blue jeans. But how did a kerfuffle about this storied show end up with Lori threatening to beat up Blake Shelton? Let's find out. Okay, so Lori might have a stronger connection to the Grand Ole Opry than just about anybody else in country music. Just look at the facts. Lori's one of the few country stars actually born in Nashville. Her father, George Morgan, was an Opry mainstay. It's where he performed songs like Room Full of Roses and Candy Kisses. Lori was only 13. That's right, 13, when she played the Opry for the first time alongside Dad. So it's no surprise that Lori gets riled up about the Opry. For all intents and purposes, she is the Opry. But still, it was something of a shock when, while discussing the Opry, Lori said that Blake Shelton was gonna get a spanking. So what the heck's going on? Blake might like that. Well, it involves a dispute about the Opry and what famous stars owe the show. 
You see, the Opry has a rule that inductees are supposed to perform in the Opry a certain amount of times per year. The organization gives you an honor and a career boost, and in return, you help out the Opry by performing. The exact number is a secret, but it's rumored to be around 10. But for some of the bigger names in country's most famous club, this requirement is more of a pain than an opportunity. They have to carve out time from touring, which is much more lucrative, to play an old-timey radio show. And the worst of these offenders is Blake Shelton. He became a member in 2010, and for the first few years, Blake usually did the Opry only two or three times. The newest member of the Grand Ole Opry, Mr. Blake Shelton. And some years, he didn't do a show at all. That's why Lori, who plays the Opry as many as 16 times a year, caught him out. She said, quote, When I see him, it's over for Blake. Blake, you better look out, buddy. Blake Shelton should consider himself lucky. I'm sure there are many, many guys who'd pay good money for a spanking from Lori Morgan. Lori Morgan has had a great career in country music, but not the easiest time in her own life. It's been full of struggle and heartbreak, but she has learned many lessons over the years. For example, Lori has learned to take a different perspective towards relationships. Early in her career, one of her go-to songs was Stand By Your Man by Tammy Wynette. And if you love him, be it just made sense. Lori's voice and style borrowed heavily from the legendary queen of country, and she was also always involved with passionate but struggling men. But she no longer sings the classic song. Why? She says, quote, We women were not meant to suffer. Lori Morgan is still taking care of business. But now, more importantly, she's also taking care of herself. Alright, that's enough of me. Now we want to hear from you all. What do you think? Were you more of a fan of George Jones or Keith Whitley? Was she out of bounds calling out Blake Shelton? Have you ever seen Lori perform live? And what are your favorite songs by Lori Morgan? Get in the comments and tell us all your thoughts. While you're there, tell us another interesting celebrity country music icon with an interesting life that we should cover next. If you enjoyed our video today, which I certainly hope you did, please click that thumbs up icon to show your support. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what, what happened. happened.